Hey everybody, in this video we thought we'd set ourselves a fun challenge, and that is to see if we could create our own Tomb Kings faction. Now it's no secret that the Tomb Kings are quite heavily based upon ancient Egypt given that Warhammer fantasy flair, but if you look into the lore of them, there's actually other human nations around at the same time that the Tomb Kings were still alive, and all of these are kind of based on real world actual historical nations and things. So we thought what we could do is use that for some inspiration. Now it's no secret that the Egyptians were actually heavily influenced by Greek culture because of the deeds of Alexander the Great and his Macedonians. So we thought, well, why not create our own Tomb King city in the very northern part of Nehekara, and instead of the Egyptian theme, go for more of a Greek theme. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to convert our own custom miniature, basically making a skeleton hoplite, then we're going to paint him too. So we hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. So what's the plan for our skeleton warrior? Well, just like how the Tomb Kings are very much stereotypes of ancient Egypt with a Warhammer flair, what we're looking at here is those stereotypes of ancient Greece, which we can put a Warhammer flair onto. So this means our miniature needs to have things like a large round bronze shield, he's got to have a plume on the helmet, a spear, possibly a cloak as well, things like that. And so we've had a good think about the easiest way to get a hold of these parts that will match our skeleton. And having a look around, I think we found the perfect kit. It is this one right here, Athenian Armoured Hoplites from Victrix, and we picked this up from North Star Miniatures in the UK, and this set comes with loads of sprues full of bits, enough for 48 miniatures if you just build them as historical miniatures. But this is one of the older kits from Victrix's range, so the parts are a little bit more chunky than what they do nowadays, meaning they fit quite well with these older skeletons from Games Workshop, so it's ideal. Got one of the frames just here, so you can see what I mean. You have loads of small parts that are all individual pieces, so we can easily glue them onto the skeleton. So for example, we've got the swords here, including the iconic coppice just there. We've got round shields, we've got spears if you wanted to use those, there's helmet plumes down here that we can use as well. We've got a cloak just over here, so you can see it's loads and loads of parts, all really useful for what we're going to do here. So we're going to start out with our skeleton by going for the core body to begin with, and I built that up just here, so you can see what I've got on the base is a set of legs and a torso, and I think what we're going to do is start out by having a sword sheathed at his side down here. So that means we need to put on a strap around his, well around his shoulder really, because we can't just have it stuck to his waist. So to do that, what we're going to use is a little bit of plastic guard. Now you could use some green stuff for this if you wanted to, but it's much easier I find for rank and file like this to use plastic guard. What I've got is a very thin piece, it's less than a millimetre thick, and I've just cut it into a thin strip, about one millimetre or so wide, maybe one and a half, so you see it's quite narrow. And the idea with this is that I'm going to glue it onto the hip of our skeleton just there with a little bit of super glue, and then I'm going to bring it up and around the shoulder, fold it around there, and then just pinch it together back down there once again, glue that on there, and then it's just a matter of sticking the sword on the side and trimming down the excess, and then we'll have a loop. So I'm going to do that now, then we'll move on to the next stage. And there we go, a nice easy way of adding a sword onto the miniature. You can see it's nice and quick to do that, and it looks really cool as well. So next thing we want to do is glue on the arms, and this means, of course, what we want is a spear. So I'm going to start out with that. I've chosen this spear just here, and my plan is to glue it so it's fairly upright. I think sort of about that kind of pose there. Of course, if you wanted to, you could have it leveled. The choice really is yours. But when it comes to the other arm, it's going to be a little bit different from the normal assembly, because the Tomb Kings normally have the shield fitting around the hand of the skeleton, so sort of sticking straight out. But as we're going for a Greek shield, it's actually a different way of holding holding in. It's more flat against the arm here. Imagine the shield going over the shoulder, so you'll have that sort of fit and that kind of pose when you put this arm onto the body. It means, rather than having the fist sticking outwards like that, we want to have it a little bit more flat like that. So I'm going to glue that on there, and then we can move on to the next stage. And here we have the core of that body assembled with the arm in the right pose because I've got a shield just here. You can see the idea is this is going to fit flat against it going on there, which if we look around the side, the arm's going to butt right up against it, right in the middle, just along there. Now I'm not going to glue the shield on just yet because it's so large it's going to get in the way of the other things I'm going to be doing here. So we'll come back to that later on. I think now though what would be a cool thing to do is to put a cloak on there because in the kit I'm using you get a whole load of them, you get six here. Now you could keep this for champions or just randomly scatter them across your units, maybe save them up for tomb guard, the choice would be yours of course, but they fit really nicely. The cloak I've got is this one right here and the plan is just going to stick over his shoulders, so just along there going flat down his back. Now it is a very clean cloak at the moment, so I think to fit the theme a bit better, it'd be a good idea to distress this. So what I'm going to do is just use a knife just to cut a few little rips and tears into it, and then I'm going to glue it on. 
I've got the cloak glued on now and you can see the little rips and tears I've added into it and now it's really looking the part and it brings us to the next stage which is to put a head on his shoulders. Now when it comes to the head what I think is a good thing to do here is take a look at one of the heads that appears on the skeleton frame. Now specifically what I'm talking about here is this head right here, the one with the little helmet on it, because this one actually looks vaguely like a pilos helmet, so one of the types of ancient Greek helmets. So I think it's going to look the part when we put it, stick it on the miniature, especially if we put a plume on top of it. The good thing about this helmet too is that it's not really used in the normal Tomb Kings army, so if you know anyone else who's doing Tomb Kings, they're almost certainly going to have loads of those head spares. You can always trade them for some of the more Egyptian style ones if you wanted to. But the idea is we're going to glue that head on and then put on a plume, again from our hoplite sprue, and there are a few to choose from here, so we've got two down down here there's another one just up there. So I'm going to pick one of those and stick it on top. So the plan is to get the head on there and I do have one that I've already cut out and cleaned up and the good thing about these ones is they're actually quite poseable. So the plan is to glue it on facing this sort of direction along here so it's going to be just poking up above the rim of the shield. The head's now glued on, including that plume. I think it's really looking the part now. All we've got to do is stick on the shield, which is going to go on here. Now, bear in mind with these shields, there is some detail on the back of them. There are these sort of little ribbon things hanging down here, so just make sure they're pointed downwards when you stick it on. But what I'm going to do is just glue this on here, and then it's time to start painting. So I'm going to undercoat him with some Zandri dust spray, and once he's dry, we'll come back and start painting him. And here he is with that undercoat applied, our citizen soldier, skeleton spearman of the great city of Alexandros, based in the very northern limits of Nehekara. And so what we're going to do is now start painting him. Now Zandri Dust offers a really good starting point for painting bone, and what I want to do to begin with is just lift that colour up and make it a bit lighter. So I'm going to dry brush it with some Skeleton Legion. So to do this, what I've got is a small dry brush from Citadel. I'm just going to load up some of this paint on the brush, just get it on the tip just there, and get some tissue paper, work it into the bristles and remove the excess paint. I'm going to work it along until I'm getting to about this sort of strength of paint appearing there on the paper. With this reached, it's time to just start dry brushing it onto the miniature. And it's an ideal technique at this stage because there's lots of texture to pick out here. All we want to do is just start brushing it along to make sure we catch the bone, not worrying about any of the details for the time being. With the dry brush done, you can see the bones getting lighter. And the reason why I did that first, because inevitably it's caught some details surrounding the bone there. So now what we can do is start base coating these other colors and neaten up as we go along. I'm gonna start out with the all important bronze here. And so for this, I'm using the aptly named Spartan bronze. And to really go into the sort of bronze age feel that I wanna evoke here, even the spear tip's gonna be this color. Now to apply it, I'm going for a size one brush here from Artisopus, but any medium sized brush would do just fine for this because all we're looking to do is to base coat these features at this stage. So for example, we've got things such as the helmet it. And when we're doing areas like this, it's a matter of just being as neat as possible when you get close to any of that bone. So just being really careful around there. But as we get to more open areas, it's nice and quick just to block these parts in. So just around here like this. And there we are, all that bronze has been base coated, including the spear tip. Now, if he was holding a sword, I'd probably do the blade bronze there as well. And I know the Greeks would normally use iron for such things, but in this case, what I want them to do is to fit in the same sort of time period of the Warhammer world when the Tomb King's around. They use bronze for everything, so that's why I want to stick to that here. So now what we're going to do is move on to some other base coats to build up to the wash on the miniature. And the first of those is going to be for the cloak. Now, the colour used here I'd consider to be quite an important one, because this is going to be a major colour that's going to pop out in the model, and so on an army, it would appear frequently. And so I've had to think. I'm going to go for a red here. Now, there's a few reasons for it. The first being in the ancient world, red was a really common colour for warlike things, so it really fits here essentially. But also, it's going to stand apart from the main Tomb King colour scheme, which is blue. And finally, I think we can all think of a famous film where they have red cloaks and the hoplites walking around in them. Definitely appropriate in this case. So what I've picked out now is some Asmodeus red for this. With that done, I'm then going to paint the plume. And whilst I'm looking for two colours here later on, for the time being, I'm just going to use one. I'm going to use some Griffin Claw here. Then finally, it's time to base coat the spear haft and the leather. But this just need a dark brown, so I'm going to use some scorched earth. But first of all, need some Asmodeus red, and to apply it, I'm starting out with a size one brush again, but it's going to get a bit tricky on the inside going around the skeleton's body. So in that case, I just switched to a smaller brush. The process will be the same throughout though, of making sure the paint's thinned down with a bit of water and under control on the brush, and then it's time to start blocking this in. So we're looking at the cloak around here. I'm going to block it in entirely, just being as neat as possible now whenever I get close to any bone and any bronze. And you can see what I mean about it being tricky on the inside, Side. To do underneath there, I'm just going to go for a smaller brush, but this one's great for doing the outside around here.
Next up, it's time to base coat the plume on the helmet. And in this case, I'm looking for an alternating black and white. So to start it out with, I'm just going to base coat it with some Griffin Claw, and then I'm going to come back to the black later on. And finally, it's time to move on to a dark brown. And here I'm going for some scorched earth. This is going to be for the haft of the spear, the back of the shield, and also the leather of his sword belt. And with that, all the base coat colours are now applied, and so what we can do is apply the wash. And what I've done here is look to apply as many base coats as possible that can all share the same wash, which we can apply in just one go across the entire miniature, which is a really efficient way of painting these guys really quickly. So you can really just produce whole units of them. Just working all the base coats in, doing all the wash, then moving on to your layers and highlights. But that wash is what we need now, and in this case we need a dark brown wash for that nice earthy feel here. So I'm going to use some Battlewood wash for this. And to apply it, go for a large brush. I'm using a medium shade brush from Citadel, and the reason is this allows us to apply a Really generous amount at once. You just need to load up your brush and then start applying it to your miniature. So for example, if I start in the middle just here, all you do is put it on and start pushing it around, making sure to work it into all the little corners, all the nooks and crannies and things as you go along. Now I'm being careful not to let it build up too much in any one area because whilst it is going to stain it and make it a bit darker, I don't want to overdo it because we need to layer up and brighten things back up again afterwards. So I'm just looking for anywhere I might be pooling a lot and just using the brush to soak away the excess paint. I'm also keeping an eye out for it pooling too much in any particular areas and causing blobs. Now good places for that sort of thing to happen are going to be on the shield, particularly on the back of it. So keep an eye out in areas like that. If you spot your, that's what a large blob of paint, so for example if it really builds up like on the back of the cloak here and it really builds up like that, that's the sort of thing I mean. Just use your brush just to soak away the excess and just redistribute it elsewhere around the miniature. And once you've done so, give it about 45 minutes to dry. The wash is dry, so now it's time to move on to the next phase, which is to do a bit of layering just to clean some things up before I highlight the miniature. And for this, I'm going to return to that bone first of all. Now, I did think about dry brushing this, but because the detail is so tightly packed together with things like that cloak, I think layering is going to work out better here. We only need to do it very lightly, so it won't take very long. What we need to do is return to the original colour we used for the bone, so this is going to be Skeleton Legion in our case. And to apply it, I'm going for a small to medium brush. I've got size zero here from Artisopus. Really, the key thing is again a brush that holds a good point. And with it, I'm just going to thin the paint down so it's a little bit translucent, so about to this sort of consistency just here on the palette, and then just going to make sure I don't have loads in the brush to keep that nice point there on the bristle so we have the control. And then what I'm looking for are the flat parts of the bones. So if we take a look at his leg down here, it's going to be things such as the kneecap, which I'm just going to quickly pick out with a bit of that colour, and we've got the leg going here. I'm just going to thinly apply it like this, just looking to do a quick coat over there, not too much, just making sure to avoid any recessed parts we might encounter. Now that really shows up as we get to the rib cage, but again, just make sure you pick out the raised areas and avoid those recesses. With the bone now brought back to the mid-tone, I think the next thing to do is turn our attention to the bronze, because it's such a major feature of this scheme here that it needs to be a little bit shiny, I think, just to pop out. So in this case, I'm going to layer it, again going back to our original colour for it. So it's Spartan Bronze in this case. And to apply it, I'm going to stick to the same brush, so again the size zero, and it's very much going to be the same technique here, where I'm looking for the flat parts and the raised up parts, I'm going to avoid those recesses. Now there's also the metallic shine to consider here, where in the recesses things are going to be a little bit more matte, whereas the flat areas are going to be nice and shiny, just going to add a bit more contrast to things as well. So with it thinned down and ready, we can start applying it onto these bronze parts, and as I mentioned, we want to avoid those recesses. So on the face of the shield, that means painting it onto flat areas like this, but as we get to this area here, I'm just going to be careful not to go right into that corner, just close to it, so we retain the definition that we got there from the wash. With that metallic sheen returned to the shield there and the helmet and the spear tip, we're now going to move on to a few more colours with which we're going to do some layering again. Starting out with that red, another important colour here, going back to some Asmodeus red for this. Then what we're going to do is do some layering on the plume of the helmet, in this case I'm going back to Griffin Claw. But then it's time to introduce that black to it to create the pattern, and for this what I'm going to use is some Death Reaper. But first of all, I need some Asmodeus red, and to apply it, I'm going for the size zero brush once more. And with this, it's the same sort of technique, just looking to avoid those recesses. But this time, because we're painting onto fabric, you can see it's all the creases essentially. So we've got the fabric going down here. What I'm looking for are these parts that stand out, such as just here. It's going to be careful of those little rips and tears that I scored into it earlier on, and where it creases in, it's going to avoid the darker areas too.
With that done, it's then time to move on to the plume. And for this, I've returned some Griffin Claw. And the layering here is going to be a little bit different because whilst at the base where it meets that bronze, we want to keep that darker, as we get further up towards the end, just allow the brush to fall into the recesses beneath these hairs along here. And the reason for this is we don't want it to appear too dark because of the intensity of the shading. So just allow some of that colour to settle in there and just work your way along. Finally, it's time to add the black on the plume here to create the pattern. And for this, I'm using some Death Reaper. And what I'm going to do, turning the model quite awkwardly to begin with, but all the way around, I'm just going to leave a little bit of the lighter colour towards the end of the plume and then put in a little block around about there, of about that sort of distance, just using the texture of the hair for a bit of guidance. So there we go. Then I'm going to skip a roughly equal amount. So going a bit further around and blocking it in just there. And then once again, leaving a roughly equal amount. So going down to about this point this time. So I think three will be enough. So we just want it there like that. With that marked in, we can use this as guidance by just following the texture across the top of the plume. So just bringing it down across here then repeating it down the other side. With that done, we can now move on to the next phase of painting the miniature, which is going to be to highlight it. And the highlighting stage is entirely optional. You certainly don't need to do it. You could in fact just base the miniature now and it's gonna look great on the tabletop, but to really make it pop, highlighting is what you need to do. And that's what we're gonna start doing now, beginning with the bone. In this case, what we need is a light bone color. So I'm gonna use some vampire fang for this. And then once that's done, we'll move on to the bronze. And here I'm gonna be using some glistening gold for the highlight. Finally, it'll be time to highlight that red. And here I'm gonna be using some evil eye red. But first of all, what we need is some Vampire Fang, and to apply it, I'm going for my fine brush now, down to a size double zero from our Sopus, so for lots of control, a really nice point on here too. And with this, on the bone, we're now looking for features that stand out. So any details that will catch the light in the corners, anything like that that pop out. So if we go back to the leg down here, for example, that means on things like the kneecap, what we should do is just follow around the outer edge of it, just along there, along that crescent where the light would catch. But then we've also got this ridge just above it here, and so we want to follow that too. So this little edge going along here, just want to pick that out, it's working away along. So just there, for example, as we get further up toward the hips, we want to get this area down here. And there's also a bit of light catching the front of the bone down here. So I'm just going to run a fine line just down the front of it, just a short distance about there, just to get a highlight there as well. So it's basically this sort of thing all the way around, just looking for bits that stand out and just quickly running your brush along them. We're now ready to move on to highlight the bronze, and in this case, I'm using some glistening gold. And once again, with the fine brush, I'm using the size double zero again. We're looking for the details that stand out. And in the case of the bronze, it's going to be sharp edges and things. So for example, I'm doing the outside of the shield here. Just using the side of my brush just to skim all the way around to get a sharp highlight. But you won't always be able to quite approach these edges with the side of the brush like that. So sometimes it will be necessary to use the point of it and just make sure you're nice and steady and comfortable to do this. I like to paint it on in a downward motion like this just to get some nice easy control following the edge all the way around. Now that all the bronze is highlighted, we can move on to the red fabric. And in this case, I'm going for some evil eye red. And here I'm looking first of all for the outer hem and edges, so along here, but also as I go along, I'm keeping an eye out for any rips and tears that I put in there. So for example, we've got one right in the middle. Just wanna go around the outside here to emphasize that a little bit more. So just carefully around there. Also, when it comes to the creases, I'm looking at the peaks of them where they really stand out. So for example, on this one here, it's gonna run a line of this color along the top down there. And with that, we've now finished highlighting those main colors of the model, but we do need to do that plume, so I'll move on to that now, followed by the leather. For the plume, we need to take the white parts closer to white, so here I'm gonna use some ivory tusk. Then for the black, I'm gonna highlight this with a dark gray, so I'm gonna use some dungeon stone gray here. With that done, it's time to move on to the leather. And in this case, just gonna go for a medium brown, I'm gonna use some ancient forest for this. But first of all, the white parts of the plume are what we need to highlight, and for this, what I'm using is ivory tusk. To apply it, going for that size double zero brush once again. And here it's a matter of just getting a small amount of this ready, and previously we allowed the paint to fall into the recesses as we were layering it effectively, but this time we just want to pick out the raised parts of the strands of that texture. So make sure the paint's thinned and ready, then we can start looking for those parts. And if we look at these segments just here, you can see some of the parts are just standing out. And what we're looking at is just picking them out with a few lines of this color. So just there, for example, just here and just along there. In addition, on the back of the shield, it does have that little ribbon like rope like thing that goes around it. And I'm just gonna use this color to pick that out too. Don't have to do anything too in depth here. Just a case of just picking out a bit of that texture just to mark that out there like that. Once that's done, we can move on to highlighting the black segments. And for this, I'm using some dungeon stone gray. So a nice dark gray, and it's the exact same procedure here, just picking out some of those raised strands. 
And finally, I'm going to use a little bit of Ancient Forest to highlight the brown leather. And here I'm going to be purposely a little bit rough as I apply the highlight to the edge of these details, just to give the impression of a little bit of age worn here on the leather. And there we go, all details highlighted. So if you wanted to, again, you could leave the model here, just based up, and it's going to look fantastic on the tabletop. However, now what we're going to do is add a bit of weathering to it because this is such an ancient skeleton. Now, this is going to go largely on some of the bronze details, but also some on the cloak too. But bear in mind, if you decide to do this, it is going to take away some of the sheen from the metallic. So the choice is yours as to whether or not you do this sort of thing. But what we're going to do is look for a really ancient verdigris appearance on the shield and the armor bits and stuff like that, almost to give the impression of it being a piece of armor from antiquity is what we're going for here. So what we're going to do is start out with some Lupercal Green and Lamia Medium and what I'm going to do is create a super thin wash of this colour. So to do this I'm using my size 1 brush and I'll start out with some of the Lupercal Green just so you can clearly see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to pop some of that there onto the palette and what we want to do is then get plenty of Lamia Medium here. So you can see I've not used much of the Lupercal Green, making sure my brush is clean before I do this, but this is because we're looking to make such a weak version of it. I'm going to go for two brushfuls and mix that together. We're looking to create a colour something like that, you see. So with that mixed and ready, what we're going to do is just start washing this directly over our bronze. So if you look at the shield, I'm just going to start painting it on, just letting it run and settle in corners and start to stain it with this greenish colour. Now as it goes onto a flat area like this, inevitably what you're going to get is a bit of variation in how much it, well, the sort of amount and how much it dries with really. And you can see that happening there. Some little spots fit a stronger green than others. Now that's ideal. That's just what we want. As that naturally starts to happen, just leave it be as it is. Carry on and then let this completely dry. Once that's dry, we're then going in for a second coat of the exact same mix. So once again, it's Lupercal Green and Lamia Medium, but this time applied with a fine brush. So I'm right down to my size double zero. And to begin with, we're looking to emphasize the recesses where you get more moisture collecting. So that's going to be an area such as this corner of the shield just going around here. What's got in between the little rim on it, really? So you can run it into this area too, just to increase the strength of that green. In addition, on the flat areas where you've got more of these splodges that have settled, just pick a few of them at random and just exaggerate them with another application in that area. So just there, for example, once you've got some on, just draw down a little bit directly beneath it. So just down like that. That second coat's now dry and you can see the effect building up, but what we need to do is take it further now with a light colour still applied in that same sort of controlled fashion. So this time we're actually going to do a mix to get a nice sort of greeny blue colour. What I've got now is some Cabalite green and some Araman blue, and again I'm going to mix them with Lamia medium to turn them into a wash. So we need to create that on the palette. I'm using my small brush again for it, size double zero, just grab some of that Cabalite green just there and then some of the Araman blue, roughly an equal amount. It doesn't have to be exact at all, but just something in that area. There, so I think it's a tiny bit more. There we go. Mix those together to get that nice sort of bluey green color. And then it's time to thin it with a Lamia medium. Just like before, we need to have it very diluted now. So definitely make sure you're generous with this, getting plenty there onto the palette. So one, two, three, and start mixing them together until we get that wash consistency. So we're looking for something like that. And it gives you a really nice aquamarine color. So with that prepared, just load up a small amount on your brush this time. And we're looking to emphasize the parts where you get the most moisture collecting. So in the recesses, it now doesn't have to be all of them, but just start dotting this into those parts to get this slightly lighter color appearing there and just gradually build it up so you get that bluer appearance of settling in those areas. Now, when it comes to the spots, we're looking for those ones that we made larger earlier. I want to dot some of this into those two. And again, just streak it down a little bit less than before, but just focusing it towards the middle so we get that color getting stronger in those areas. Now that we've reached this stage, you can see we're building up a really nice natural appearance of weathered bronze there. And what we're going to do now is just take it a little bit further just to finish off the effect and make it pop. And for this, what we need is a really bright greenish blue now. So I'm going to use some Raygun Glow for this, again with Lamia Medium, with very much the same sort of process here, but this time even less needs to be applied as we put it on there. Now I've got some Raygun Glow just here on the palette and still using that small brush, still the size double zero. And once again, going to get some of this medium here and thin it right down to get almost a wash version of this paint. So nice bright bluish green color there now. And all we need to do is get a small amount of this, you really don't need very much, and just start dotting this into the areas where you want the verdigris to be the brightest. So we've got this large area at the bottom of the shield just here. I'm just going to dot a bit in here just to get that nice brighter blue just going in there like that. I'm also going to just bring it into some of these patches that we've got on the flat of the shield, so areas like this. Again, just looking for the large ones and just dotting it right in the middle and drawing it down a little bit so it's just running down the surface of the shield.
And there we are. You can see by applying that sequence of colors in that manner, what we've got is a really nice weathered bronze appearance there on the shield, on the armor, and bits of the spear too. And so now I can move on to the final effect, which is going to be to have some dust being kicked up on his cloak. And for this, what we need is a sort of sandy brown color. I'm going to be using some dust bowl for this and to apply it in a dry brush it on. So I've got that small dry brush from Citadel. It's going to get a small amount of this on the brush and then on some tissue, remove the excess and just work it into the brush. And we want to make this quite light so we can build it up steadily. So really keep going at it until you're down to about this sort of appearance here on the paper. With that achieved, we can start applying it, and all we need to do is just start brushing it lightly towards the bottom of the cloak. Now, once this is done, it's time to base the miniature, and as ever, it's entirely your choice what basing scheme you go for, but in this case, I am, of course, going to be going for a desert base. And with that base now fully painted, our skeletal hoplite is complete and ready to march forth and defend his king. So we hope in this video we've inspired you to go and explore the Warhammer lore and see what ideas you can come up with. And of course here what we went for was that Greek theme, but if you really look into Warhammer lore, there's lots of little story hooks for this sort of thing. So for example, you might want to check out the Reman Empire. There's also the Barrow Kings of Albion, and these are other armies that you could really run with a theme like this, with Tomb Kings, same way we did, but just with a different cultural background. But if you decide to go for the Greeks like we did here, we hope this has inspired you to start really progressing and seeing what you can do. And so for example, what you could could do if you wanted to have Ushabti in your army rather than using the normal Ushabti miniatures, have a look at some of the Malusai and the Daughters of Cain range because if you painted them like statues they look really cool as like sort of Medusa style statues animated to serve in your army. So just things like that, really fun ideas that you can explore. Also if you're going to go along with this and you pick up one of those hoplite kits from Victrix, remember to make sure you're picking up the right ones. It's the older sets that we're looking for here that have the slightly larger parts, also all the separate parts because this way you can easily combine them with the skeletons to make your hoplite Light. Anyway, we hope this has inspired you. Have fun with any themes that you create, and we'll see you again very soon.